My oh, heart brought nice. me great wealth until one day my little brother Michael and his friend were two or four people whose lives were taken. Your brother was involved in a situation last night. He was shot. He didn't make it. After the tragedy, our chief of police deceived you to make it look like the police department had lost control. No innocent people were targeted. Daddy, what do you do when you go to work? At some point, a man must ask why God created him. Yeah, the answer's for cord killers. Go, 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 go! Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Cord Killers. Our mission, which we have agreed to accept, is to tell you the intel from the front lines of the cord cutting revolution that lets you watch what you want, when you want, on any device you please. And I'm Tom Merritt. Nice to meet you. Hey, I'm Brian Brushwood. And that, my friends, is Jamie Casino, a self-styled attorney come director writer who bought two minutes of Super Bowl ad time in Savannah, Georgia to play this epic. Uh, that almost, was a real commercial. Yeah, yes. No, no, no. It, it, that was not, not a fake YouTube made up commercial. It's not the next Marvel movie either. It's a genuine <laughs> ad for an attorney for hire who will avenge his brother's death by representing you for a nominal fee. <laughs> now, that is one thing you can find on the Internet. Trust us. There are other things. Uh, some of them you might even consider better things. We don't know. But we have a special episode for you today. Our whole point of our show is telling people the ongoing story of how they can take control of what they watch to entertain them. And we're doing a special episode where we're going to share with you the services we use for streaming, the devices we use for watching this stuff, and some of the stuff that we watch that's out there on the internet. And joining us today to talk about her cord cutting experience, Ms. Nicole Spagnolo. Hey, guys. I'm glad to be back. <laughs> yeah. Good to have our, you on the show. Our first Nicole. return guest, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? I think so. Um, yeah, yeah, that's true. It's so you fresh know, in my mind. I'm, I'm, I'm really eager to share anything that I've learned to the audience to help them with that process. Because it can be pretty daunting, right? Because you recently murdered a cord. I did. <laughs> and my hands are still bloody. So... That's why I'm here to kind of <laughs> to, to what wipe repent. There's like, <laughs> yeah. no, there's no repentance. They had it coming. <laughs> it can't. It is really not as violent as it sounds, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, to cut the cord. Now we have all walks of life represented here. I have most. I have shaved the cord as close to the bone as as I can get. But I haven't quite convinced the wife to totally cut it. Brian has cut the cord entirely. Nicole has recently cut the cord. Uh, so let's start with the prerequisites. What are the things? you need to do first in uh, order to cut the cord. I'll tell now, you obviously, you're going to need an internet connection, right, Brian? Yes, but more importantly, you're going to need an hour to sit there on the phone and deal with all the customer attention that they're going to give you as they try to give you deal after deal after deal to keep you on that cord. Well, yeah. So you're going, you're going right to the to the cutting side, right? You're you're saying once you're ready to call that cable company and tell them goodbye, you're going to find out just how much they want you. You may not think they care about you because that's the way they treat you now because they're getting your money automatically every month. But once you say I don't want to give you that money anymore, they're going to bend over backwards. Yes. Well, and 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 it will take a long time to to get through it as somebody who who's been there. But as far as like prerequisites before you can even begin, I, I guess a, a decent internet connection. What do you suppose matters as far as a decent internet connection? How fast is fast enough? Uh, I think a gigabit is fast enough. <laughs> right. <laughs> working on it. Working yeah. on it. Uh, no, you definitely need megabits per second. If you've got something that's kilobits per second, it's not going to cut it. Uh, old DSL lines, dial-up lines, things like that are not going to cut it. Once you get, I, th I would say safely above 25 megabits per second, it's doable. Above 50 megabits per second, it's comfortable. Now, so you wouldn't, I would think that to at least get Netflix to work, you just need like five megabits. I was at a hotel and there able are, to- Sure, sir, sure, sure. There are minimums that, that will make it work, but you will run into variations in the service that can make it frustrating. So how fast in the internet did you have, Nicole, when you guys cut the cord? Um, I think we're at 20. So we're right there. I guess. Do, do yeah, you have, so you're right in the, you're right in yeah. the, it, it works, right? Yeah, it works. We haven't really had any problems. We, all, uh, we also ran Cat5 and did direct connections to all of our devices um, versus going wireless. So Mark got up into the attic and ran it one night <laughs> when it was cooler because <laughs> we live in that, Arizona. Yeah, so, that's, uh, <laughs> a, that's a great point is that uh, wireless is always going to be less reliable than wired. 
right. you can run cables or, or if you're near your modem, that's going to help a, a lot. And, and also it depends on how many people are going to be using it at once, right? But Brian, you yeah. got multiple people watching multiple things, right? Yeah, well, and part of, you know, keep in mind, I'm, I'm in a lucky position in that, you know, recently AT&T offered their uh, gigapower service. So we have like 300 megabits. It's ridiculous. So everybody's streaming stuff at the same time. But, you know, one of the things when we switched over to AT&T from uh, Time Warner was on Time Warner, we had uh, theoretically unlimited bandwidth. Like we could use as mm -hmm. many... Uh, download as much as we wanted and it wasn't a problem. Whereas with Gigapower, we had to consider that we have a one terabyte per month cap. And then it's another, um, I think another $10 per 100 gigabytes up to three. And then it like maxes out or whatever. So that is another factor that you have to consider is on the one hand, well, that would suck if I downloaded a bunch of stuff and went over my cap. But on the other hand, the max would be $30 penalty. And that's still a hell of a lot cheaper than the, you know, however many hundreds of dollars I was spending back when I was with Time Warner. See, you have, you have a really high cap. Um, I We have Cox Cable and I didn't even realize we had a cap until I got an email two days ago saying that I, I'm already one gigabit, uh, gigabyte over my 300 gigabyte limit. And and. There was nowhere when I signed up that this was even disclosed. So I'm kind of, I don't know, I'm so, so do you, did, did they have a penalty for it? Are they charging you more? No, they just said, hey, we're just letting you know you're one gigabyte over. And it didn't really say like I had to do anything. And in fact, I found a number of articles online that said that you can ignore it, basically. <laughs> So, so at this I point, they're just getting in the habit of, of telling people, not necessarily enforcing any kind of penalties. From what I can tell, um, I, I don't know. It, it's in order for us to go to the next cap level, we would have to go to the next plan. So the next they only go up as high as I think 400 is the cap for uh, for the next higher level plan. But that's a lot more money. All right, Tom. Well, outside so that, of outside of cable, there, I mean, there, I assume there's there's other options. Sure. So let's let's say your floor, your bottom minimum is five megabits per second. And the closer you get to 20, the better. 50, you're going to be totally golden. Uh, let's say that you don't have a bandwidth cap. That's ideal. If you do have a bandwidth cap, check in, do some research like Nicole, find out how heavily, how strictly is it enforced, how many people are going to be watching things, how much do you watch. And then what you're going to need uh, is devices, which we're going to get to later in the show. You're also going to need some power strips to plug in the devices because uh, you might need to use multiple devices and they're cheaper these devices than buying a, like a big old set top box or even a VCR was back in the day. And you're gonna, you might wanna have a universal power supply because sometimes internet will still continue to work but maybe the power goes out to that particular outlet or something and you, and you can actually continue to stream uh, while you deal with that program. So those are a couple of other things to consider here. And the last one has nothing to do with internet an over-the-air antenna. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. have one, Nicole? I have one. Yeah, that's what we decided. So in Phoenix, over-the-air is amazing here. It's just because it's flat, right? Um, and there's a great website, uh, antennaweb.org, that you can plug in your zip code and find the type, the strength of an antenna that you need. So that's actually what we use to find uh, the level of antenna that we needed. So I think it was like 75 bucks. Um, there's some services around here that we looked into that maybe they would install it, but we called them and it was like almost $300 to install. And they just said, well, we're going to reuse, since you have direct TV, we're just going to reuse your mounting. So are you ready to, to do it now? And we're like, well, we still are playing for another month of direct TV. So we kind of put it off, but then Mark said, well, I think I can do this. So he ended up just going up on top of the roof and taking out the direct TV uh, satellite and putting the new antenna in. And he said it was really easy to do. And now we have, um, we're using the cable for that antenna. So we have every room that has um, the, uh, the, the cable uh, will get over the air TV now. So that's brilliant. You took the antenna, you wired it into the existing cable wires that are in the walls of your house, just like yeah. they would wire the outside cable into it. So it exactly. goes everywhere. But you don't have to put it on the roof. Brian, do you put no. yours on the yeah, roof? Yeah, no, no, no. I, I don't have that kind of man points to actually get up on the roof and do anything. So instead, <laughs> I bought, and actually I got guilted into it because I considered what would happen in an emergency. And, and if we didn't have internet, how would we know what, what the president wants us to do? So I spent 40 bucks and got a leaf antenna, which yep. you just secure to the uh, to the drywall 
on your house, and it works, uh, I'd say, 95%. There's only one channel that's a bit iffy, and to be honest, if, if you just move the, the antenna a little bit, it comes in just fine. But outside of that, I, I was very happy with it. It's a very cheap solution, and of course, you could couple that with a, with a TiVo, which I'm sure we'll talk about later on. Yeah, it doesn't matter uh, so much. It, it matters a lot, is what I meant to say, where you live. Uh, so mm -hmm. if you're in a situation where I am in the middle of a big city, I'm in Los Angeles, I put the leaf on the table next to my television and I get all the channels. It's just I'm, I'm bathed in, in, in the kind of signals that I need to, to get. When I was in San Francisco, that was not the case, especially when I was in Oakland. I was facing away from all the channels. That's where Antenna Web comes in very handy. It tells you which direction, if you have a directional antenna, to point your antenna. Uh, so you want to do, do a little bit of this research. But the reason it's worth it is that you can get all the broadcast networks over the air for free, plus networks that you don't know even exist. There are yeah. networks broadcast in the multiplex parts of the channel. Those are the extra parts of the channel. So you get, let's say you get channel five. You're going to get channel five. Then you're going to get channel 5-2 and 5-3. Maybe you'll get 9-1, 9-2, 9-3, 9-4. If there's some other stuff on those channels, you may not be interested and you may, especially if you're looking for foreign language uh, components. You see that stuff a lot. So Do you, uh, do you guys feel more connected to, uh, I feel more connected to my community now that I'm doing over the air. It's weird. So, you know, I, I probably would if I ever used it. You know, we recently went on vacation. We had our in-laws come in, and it was kind of delightful to say, here's the television. Here's how it works. You turn it on. You pick a channel. You watch whatever crap happens to be on at the time. Bye. Like, there was something <laughs> beautiful about the simplicity of actually going back to 1983. Well, right. with our over-the-air setup, uh, it actually makes it more complex because there's like, well, here's the TiVo with the over-the-air. Now here's the Roku box. Now here's... The <laughs> Yeah, sure. <laughs> so it, could, it could work both ways. Let's actually get into some of these streaming services so we can figure out how to get programs onto your television with some signals intelligence. Signals intelligence. Bye. Yeah, so this is all of the services you can use to get television. Now, we talked a little bit about one service the over-the-air broadcast in your area, uh, but you may or may not have good over-the-air broadcast in your area, and these are lots of other ways. One of the ways to get that broadcast quality stuff is just look for the network apps and websites. Uh, they, they will sometimes require you to log in with a cable subscription if you want to get more recent stuff, but even then, they, they'll often have full episodes for people who don't have a cable subscription. They're just delayed sometimes as much as 28 days. Some of them don't delay at all. CW app, just shows you everything you can get right there on the CW app. Now, Nicole, you found a good way to track down what all the different offerings are from the broadcast networks. Yeah, I found one app in particular that had so many listed that I didn't even know knew exist. It, it's called Yidio. It's Y-I-D-I-O, and it has all of them. And next to them, it even says whether or not you need another authentication to get all of the episodes. So, like, for instance, ABC used to be free. The whole thing was open. But now they're trying to verify <laughs> you. And this has really upset my mom because this, for her, this was how she watched her shows. And she uh, she uses DirecTV and it doesn't authorize with DirecTV. So when, they, when these networks start adding these layers, it gets more and more frustrating for people. And that's, I think, where the cable company comes in and says, I'll rescue you. I'll give you a basic pass package and you can just log into these apps then. So yeah, at least for the broadcast yeah. networks, you can. And sometimes like uh, Time Warner and Comcast have these cheap broadcast networks plus HBO packs. That might be a way to cord shave, right? Yeah. Where you don't, you're only paying 30 or $40 a month. So you're not paying nearly what these other packages are. And then you're able to log in and authenticate with these online versions. Yeah, definitely. I like them though. Another way to fill in the gap for a broadcast is Aereo. Now, that's not available in all places. Uh, it's in, in, All of this stuff is United States only. But Aereo brings you broadcast, uh, live broadcast television over the Internet by renting you a very small antenna. But it's all yours. No one else gets to use it. Uh, and they're coming to more and more cities around the country. In fact... Brian, uh, they just announced they're coming to San Antonio, which is just so close to you. Yeah, I'm I'm way south of Austin. I, I could probably ride my bike to the San Antonio sp uh, city limits. And uh, I don't know, from what you were telling me, it sounds like they're pretty pretty hardcore on enforcing the location on all that stuff, huh? Yeah, because they, they don't want to get somebody taking them to court saying, oh, and they, they let you watch out of area. They're very good at saying, look, all we're doing 
is renting someone an antenna that brings them the broadcast signals they could get if they put an antenna up themselves. Right. We're just so. renting it for them and allowing them to access it over the internet. So yeah, if you were technically in Austin and getting San Antonio channels that you wouldn't be able to get, then they'd have problems in court. And they're already having enough problems in courts. The broadcast networks are trying to sue them to stop this. Yeah, and it, it's headed to the Supreme Court, allegedly. We'll see if that where that goes and how. But uh, you didn't mention what to me is the most impressive feature of the area is the cloud-based DVR and the fact that you're able to access all the content retroactively uh, that, to me, is the huge convenience factor where I don't have to think in advance of what it is I want to make sure to record. And that's the beauty of all of these services that we're about to talk. The Netflixes, the Hulus, the Voodoos. You can just go on and say, oh, I want to watch something. And you don't have to have remembered to program a season pass. You don't have to remember, ah, did I did I tell it to only record five episodes? Am I caught up? Is it going to delete an episode? The stuff is just always there. Nicole, what's your go-to? Do you, do you use Netflix the most? Um, I'm actually going more towards Amazon Prime. It, it, I feel like it's 50-50 for me right now. I used to be really heavy into Netflix, but now that I've cut the cord, I've been watching a lot of TV shows. Like Amazon Prime really has a lot of TV shows so that I'm Explain enjoying. how Amazon Prime works, because unlike Netflix, it's not just a sign up for a video service. Right. So, so Am Amazon different. Prime initially was rolled out as just a pay a yearly fee and you get free two day shipping. Well, and then they added on um, their uh, whole streaming content. So a bunch of movies and TV shows into that as well. So they have the streaming as well as a lending library. So if you have a Kindle, you can get a free book every single month. So they have like this three prong approach to the prime account that makes it a huge value for me. Yeah, uh, one of the things that, that surprises me about Amazon, uh, keep in mind, just three years ago, we were calling Amazon the RC Cola of online video streaming. <laughs> they weren't Hulu, they weren't Netflix, they didn't have a lot of the names. But what's interesting is that really has shifted. I would say that Amazon is my very close second place, go-to place to watch video because nowadays what I'll do is if I know I'm going to fall in love with a certain show or I know that I want to see the latest season, for example, after cutting the cord, the new season of Archer came on. So the moment that uh, that season five started, I bought a season pass. I bought the entire season in advance and every morning as soon after it's aired the night before, I hop in, I go and I check it out and it's, it's there published on there. Uh, there's a lot that I really like. I, I would say the most improved award definitely for the last year goes to Amazon. They still yeah, need to improve I, that app, though, on the Roku player. It's it's really horrible. It's it's great on the PS4, but it's horrible on the Roku 3. It's actually really good on the Xbox One as well. I guess I'm so used to it on the Roku that I don't really yeah I don't really mind. It's, it's like getting used to that really uncomfortable chair that you have to sit in. You just it, you kind of build up calluses to it. But you're right. It's it's the Roku version is not the best version. Although I noticed on the Xbox One, you can't actually initiate a rental. You have oh, to really? go to the website to do the rental, and then it'll show up on the Xbox. Hmm. Well, and I think that's really confusing for a lot of people because these apps, even though they're the same, it's Netflix, it's Amazon, they're creating completely different user experiences on all these different devices. So, I mean, I understand from a developer's perspective, it's hard to develop for all these different types, but they really need to kind of focus in and streamline and pick the best of the best and just stick with it. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's essentially three different kinds of services here, largely two, which is on-demand purchase or rental. And so iTunes is like that. Voodoo, V-U-D-U, it's owned by Walmart, is like that. There's a few others like that where you can either rent or buy movies or TV shows. Then the, And Amazon does that. But there's also the streaming service, and Netflix is the premier version of that, but Amazon's instant prime streaming service does that as well, where you just pay a monthly fee and everything they have available, not that they have everything available, but they have a lot, you can stream, well, but it, it varies from service to service what you're going to get, and things disappear as well. Yeah, and, and keep in mind that uh, Amazon is the weird one in the bunch because usually you don't pay a monthly fee. Usually what you do is you pay the $70 a year fee to get into the Amazon Prime shipping club, basically, where it's like you're able to uh, get second-day shipping for free, and oh, by the way, you now have a streaming video service like like mm -hmm. Netflix, which is, which is odd, but it also, I think provides a safe environment for them to experiment and build up a business without having to have it turn a profit or, or show that it's making money. Now, the third version, I said there were three types. The third is kind of a hybrid of, of, of parts of these, which is Hulu, where there's a free version of Hulu, Hulu.com, that you can watch 
on your laptop or your desktop. But if it is going to go into a device like a Roku or an Apple TV or even an Xbox, they charge you. They say you've got to pay $9 a month. So they become like Netflix at that point. But they still have advertisements. Netflix uh, doesn't have uh. ads. Amazon Prime Instant Streaming doesn't have ads. Hulu Plus, which is the paid version of Hulu, has ads. A lot of them. They made me go to Olive Garden the other day because of them. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what did they offer you, like a, um, uh, a, a coupon you couldn't resist or something? No, I had to sit through like the ad 10 times. We watched, um, I can't remember, oh, The Taste. So I'm a big fan of the show The Taste, and we missed a few episodes. So we are like, oh, we, we have Hulu Plus. Let's watch it. It was the most painful experience I've ever had because there's no variety. It's the same three commercials 10 times every 15 minutes. And I, by the end of it, I was just like, I give up. I'm just going to go to Olive Garden. <laughs> That's the mind but control. Exactly. They have all the broadcast network stuff, which Netflix yeah. and Amazon Prime Instant don't have. And I'm talking about current season stuff. Netflix yeah. and Amazon are all going to have old season stuff unless you pay per episode. Hulu, for free-ish, or if you're paying the monthly, will have current episode stuff. And I, it's still not worth it. I'll go buy the season. I don't... <laughs> I don't want to tell you what, man, yet. once once you break that border, once you decide, and first of all, that's the thing, once you cut the cord, you have a huge budget of money to throw away. On, so you can buy stuff that you think you might end up hating, and it's okay, because it's only three or four bucks, and you have $100 to waste every single month, and you still come out ahead. That's right, and, and, and when you may, we'll get to this in a little bit, but when you make those calculations, you have to figure out, like, well, how much am I paying for cable television, and then... If you're already getting Netflix, which a lot of people are, that doesn't come out of your your cable savings budget because you're already paying for it. That's right? true. That's true. Uh, so so what are you going to spend that money on that you aren't spending on cable is a question to think about as we go along. Uh, as we mentioned, iTunes, they do rentals, they do purchases. Crackle is a service that most famous for having Seinfeld's uh, drive drinking coffee in cars with comedians. I, I, I never get the name of it. Me right. neither. I think you're right. I think that's what it is. It's something <laughs> close to that. Uh, and it has commercials supported, commercial supported video as well. But you don't have to pay for it. It's just always commercial supported. Yeah. But it's well, not nearly fair. as bad as Hulu. I, I, I've watched movies on Crackle and it didn't make me want to pull my hair out like Hulu Plus did. Well, there's it, also it, the thing. Oh, go ahead. Brian. Oh, I was going to say, as long as we're giving high fives for ads done right, I got to admit, uh, YouTube has seen an amazing evolution over the last three or four years with the fact that now that you get to, you get a wide variety of targeted ads, give or take, you uh, have the ability to skip most of them after the first five seconds, either that or they're only 15 seconds long. You don't get you don't get run down with all that stuff. I think that YouTube, uh, again, gets another most improved award. Now, YouTube isn't always available. It's only available on the Roku three as an app. It is available on the PS4. It is available on the Xbox. Chromecast. Uh, but Chrome, yeah, the Chromecast we'll, we'll get to uh, is a good, it's probably the best way to consume YouTube. YouTube does have, through the Google Play Association that it has, some rentals and major movies and things like that. But mostly what you think of from YouTube is creator-driven content, independent content from these channels like Maker Studios or or the Fine Brothers or uh, Video Game High School. Do you guys watch much of that? I watch The Wood Whisper. <laughs> ah, well, you watch your husband's show on YouTube. You know, it's funny. I watch Daily Tech News show on YouTube. Myself. You know, it's funny. I just I watch so much Scam School. It's a great show. It's great, a great way to show. learn to win free drinks. Besides our own YouTube programming, <laughs> do we watch anything? Uh, you know, I, I, I'll i tell you in that regard, and this is something that I never really thought of. It's I'm such a hypocrite because I tell people, oh, subscribe to my YouTube channel or whatever, but I never subscribe. And then I, occasionally I'll think to do it. And I genuinely find it delightful when the little feed, you, you log in and it's like, hey, bro, this guy who you like a lot and have subscribed to has a new video. And it's it never makes me sad. I'm always like happy to jump right in there and see it. Yeah, I I like YouTube, but I I associate it to my computer, sitting on my computer and kind of getting distracted. And I just find myself never thinking about YouTube. So I, I honestly well, forget. I'll tell you, I, I, I will go ahead and give some shouts out. We got the chat room exploding right now. Red Letter Media, who of course did the famous Phantom Menace review. All of their stuff is great. I love their show, Half of the Bag. Uh, Bravest Warriors from the creators of Adventure Time. Uh, amazing show. Um, and, and that's all anyone shouting. <laughs> well, we've got a whole section where we're going to talk about things to watch, so maybe they'll start shouting some more when we get to that part. But uh, Vimeo is another place where you can find good independent films. 
uh, as well as some creator led content. And you like, you like their editor's picks, Brian, you know, every day they put a different editor's pick on there and half the time, I don't know why I didn't think it to do it today, but, uh, you, you half the time our opening videos for cord killers come from Vimeo's staff picks, yeah. uh, highly, highly recommended. Um, oh, we had John Hess from, uh, I forget what the name of the series is, um, about, uh, how to, how, about the history of filmmaking, uh, fantastic stuff. And uh, there's also Redbox Instant, uh, which is the online streaming version of the Redbox rental store, which they have packages that package in the DVD rentals along with the streaming. I think Red Verizon is involved in, in that adventure as well. But you may be sitting there thinking, okay, you cord killer people, how am I going to watch my sports? I'm a sports ball fan or a sports puck fan or some kind of the sports and I want to watch them over the air is going to help you there if you can get it, because a lot of local sports still broadcast over the air. So all that's free. Uh, but the leagues themselves sell you packages. Now, if you want to follow your local team, that's where it gets problematic because they black those out. But if you happen to be lucky enough to not be living in the city where your favorite team is, <laughs> uh, I, which works for me, I follow all my favorite St. Louis, the St. Louis Blues, St. Louis Cardinals, by buying season passes to the NHL or the MLB. And you can watch them not just on the web, not just on, on your desktop or laptop, but you can watch them on Roku, Apple TV, Xbox, PS4, lots of these devices. Yeah, uh, and, and again, as somebody who doesn't participate in a lot of sports ball uh, purchases, uh, one of the trends that from the outside I've really enjoyed watching is the way a lot of these organizations are taking control personally of their brand. For example, just two weeks ago, we talked about uh, WWE offering a digital network where you get complete access to all the archives. You get all the classic WWE moments. You get our original programming that they create just for that. And also, by the way, you now have access to all of the pay-per-view events for the entire year so by going to a monthly low fee you buy into the ecosystem and you're able to get everything you want yeah there's for, also for, espn 360 which yeah. uh it you know it has lesser known lesser popular sports but that's available as well if your isp carries it did either of you take up the uh the offer that when you bought the madden 25 video game you got the nfl sunday ticket I did. I said ESPN 360. That's the old name. It's ESPN 3, I think now. But yes, I did the Madden thing and it was only going to work on your iPad. But what I did was I airplayed it. Yeah, that's So what I was did able too. to just take it right <laughs> off my iPad and watch it on the TV over my Apple TV. Do you yeah. think that's the case where it's like they know that people can figure out that workaround, but they don't care? Like if you're smart enough to do that, congratulations. No, I think it's the opposite. I think they figure like how many people have Apple TVs and even those that do, how many are really going to figure out how to air, you know, mirror the screen? Because it's not it's not in the NFL app that you can airplay. You, do, you have to do the screen mirroring. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, we, we did the same thing with uh, that package as well. And in fact, that was one of the reasons why we decided to cut the cord, because Mark that was what was keeping him to direct TV was the, the Sunday ticket. So when they finally split it off, he's like, well, maybe, you know, if they're testing this out this year, I'm sure they're probably going to do it next year. So we're just crossing our fingers. <laughs> now, what do you do about thing. HBO? Cause HBO go is a fantastic streaming app where you can get everything that HBO offers on demand, including movies and mm -hmm. the, the episodes show up rather quickly after they air, but you have to be an HBO subscriber to take advantage of it. No exceptions. Uh, you say no exceptions, but what if I were to tell you that just two weeks ago we covered a story where one of the heads of HBO pretty much said, yeah, go ahead, share passwords. We don't care. It's well, just that, advertising. That requires an HBO subscriber. I didn't say that it had to be you. Oh, touche, <laughs> sir. Well, or did well I? Maybe I did, but I take it back if I did. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I, I think this is fascinating because his position was, look, man, if you're in a position, to, if you can't afford HBO right now and you're only watching it because you're on your parents' password, then guess what? We know that we're minting future subscribers to HBO. And so we're not worried about it. And of course, you know, the folks over at Netflix didn't cotton to that because their whole business model is based on people, please not sharing their passwords. Uh, but it's a fascinating development. So for now, I guess, according to people at HBO Go, it's best to, uh, I guess, either buy a bare bones service like you were talking about, Tom, or just cozy up to a neighbor. Just, just make friends with someone who's got HBO. That's what we're doing. Um, <laughs> we're, we're, uh, Helping his Mark's mom, she still has cable. So we're like, ah, we'll we'll pay half the bill, you know, for for HBO. It's not, it's a benefit for us. So why not? So now, one thing I want to make clear is that we are only talking about legal options on this show yeah. because we don't want people to break the law. 
Now, there is something called a virtual private network that we want to address. It is not illegal for you to use a VPN. VPNs allow you to shield your traffic from prying eyes. And in fact, I highly recommend using a VPN if you're ever using an open Wi-Fi access hotspot, like in a coffee shop or an airport or a hotel. You should be using a VPN. However, VPN servers can be located in many different areas of the world. And one side effect of that is that let's say you're Canadian and your VPN server is in the United States and you log into Hulu. Well, suddenly you can watch Hulu because it thinks you're in the United States, even though Hulu isn't available outside the United States. That's not illegal. It is a violation of the terms of service, though. So this is kind of a gray area and it's on your conscience whether you want to violate those terms of service. If you're a Canadian, you may not care. Those terms of service are under the laws of the United States, so pfft, whatever. It's, uh, it's a little bit closer to, uh, I don't know, like I guess jailbreaking an iPhone, that kind of thing. It's a definite violation of terms actually, of service. It's actually, it's, I think it's even more gray because jailbreaking is now clearly a violation of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. On a, on a cell phone in the United States. They got rid of the exemption. Whereas VPN, using a VPN is not, a, not breaking the law. Accessing a website is not breaking the law. So it, it becomes a, well, did the website say that I particularly can't access it? Then maybe in some form I am I'm breaking the terms of service, but that doesn't mean I'm breaking the law. Well, and keep in mind also what the penalty for breaking the terms of service, for example, it's uh, how about this? It's as morally gray as gold farming on 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 uh, World of Warcraft. Ah, that's is, a good. Yeah, that's where it's like where it's like if you are caught, they will they will cut your account and you will lose it. So right. if you live in Australia and you provide a P.O. box because you happen to know the zip code 90210 and you and you <laughs> set up uh, an account on Netflix and they catch you actually being a resident of uh, Australia, they will punish you to the fullest extent that they are able, which is to cancel your account. Right. So that account that you couldn't have before, now you can't have it anymore. Exactly. Right. <laughs> exactly. Although now, so the question is, what services are there? Um, do you do you have a particular VPN service that you like, Tom? For for my uh, for my protection on hotel Wi-Fi hotspots, I use Private Tunnel. Uh, it, it's an open tunnel client, and the way they work is you pay for a certain amount of data. And then you just chew through that data. Once you've chewed through that data, you go buy another big block of data. You don't have to pay monthly. I also use ProXPN uh, as a backup just because I want to have a couple. Because sometimes certain servers are, are swamped or aren't working as well. And it's good to have a couple if you can swing it. Yeah, uh, I was using ProXPN, but ProXPN shows up everywhere as anonymous proxy, which is really interesting because when you see targeted ads, uh, like like you're browsing Facebook, it said looking for singles in anonymous proxy you know like like <laughs> but uh but uh because all of it does that some some ip addresses are like banned in certain areas uh but lately my biggest problem is now that we finally have decent bandwidth uh i i i can't find a vpn that keeps up with it and the closest i've been able to find is viper vpn from uh, golden frog vypr vpn it, it's like 35 megabits down and, and 15 megabits up or something ridiculous uh and you get to pick uh, exactly what city you want your ip address to be from all right, that is a list of all the different ways you can get to the content. And there's, there's more out there if you want to keep looking. But let's talk about how you're going to watch it. Now you've got the streaming service, you've signed up. Do you want to just be stuck on your laptop? No, it's time to gear up. There are so many devices, most of them less than $100 out there that you can get. There's the Roku, there's the Apple TV. The Chromecast is only like 35 bucks. You can then buy game consoles. Those are more expensive. Those are $400, $500. They're meant for playing games, but they have lots of options to watch this stuff. Then there's TiVo, there's smart TVs, there's Blu-ray players. Nicole, what do you use? What's in your setup at home? So I have pretty much everything that you just said. <laughs> <laughs> All of it. That's I have all of it. I really yeah. do. Um, and it, there's a lot of redundancy in, in it. Uh, and the reason why we I picked them all up is because I wanted to see, like I like I said before, the apps work differently based off of the device. Um, honestly, my favorite right now, as of today, because I set up Plex on my Roku 3, is Roku 3. Uh, I love it. I can now... I can with Plex, I can get to my uh, Drobo, which has all of my digital movies, all of my digital TV shows um, with the Netflix app. I love the Netflix app on the, Ro uh, the Roku three because for children's TV shows or just TV shows in general, it doesn't auto 
forward. So every time Curious George ends, it goes to the next Curious George, and it's the best thing in the world for me. <laughs> so for those for those who don't know, can you walk us through what Plex is? Oh, sorry about that. Uh, so Plex, you you had the uh, the creator on uh, the last I, episode. I, 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 one I, of the right? developers, yeah, yeah. Pretending on, on not to show. though. Oh, <laughs> sorry. This I'm is sorry. for all our new people. <laughs> So um, it is it's a it's an app that you can install on multiple devices, Roku being one of them. It's also on Chromecast now, um, but it, it allows you to connect to your network and then serve up all of your movies, your TV shows, your podcasts. So everything locally onto that device. Um, there's also a feature. So I upgraded and I just paid for their lifetime um, service and now I can stream all of my content to my to a device uh, lo- uh, remotely. So there's like a whole like my Plex portion of it too. So it's a really cool service. Awesome. Yeah. What do you use, Brian? What do, I, I know you've got a lot of these things as well. Uh, you know, for me personally, I'm I'm a PC guy in general. Like, I'm not a big fan of the uh, the sitting in the living room experience, mainly you because mean you're a Windows guy. Well, well I mean specifically, uh, I I'm a guy who has three kids, ages one, six, and nine, and I don't need them to be watching what I find interesting, which means. I do a lot of my watching in my office or up in my studio or whatever. Uh, But for the family, the kids use Netflix on the Xbox, which I find to be fantastic. Uh, It's fast. It's easy. They're able to navigate, especially in the Netflix for kids section. They're in a closed ecosystem where I could trust that they won't run into something that I'll disapprove of. Uh, Recently, we had one of our fantastic uh, fans of the show sent me their Chromecast, which was astonishingly easy to set up, astonishingly simple to get working, and and v- way easy to, to to throw material up on there from Netflix, from Hulu, from, but best of all, from YouTube. That was the best thing, was um, right now, there's a bazillion old episodes of Bill Nye the Science Guy on YouTube. I doubt that they're legitimate, but uh, but they're but they're they're currently up and being served right now. And it was awesome to introduce my six-year-old to those, and, and she would just come in. The only trick is, Unlike Xbox, where I could just hand them the remote and say, go nuts, uh, the the Chromecast experience is complicated enough because you need to find the material on your mobile device, hit sling to the uh, to the Chromecast, and then watch it. So she kept coming back every 26 minutes. She'd say, like, another Bill Buy science guy, Dad. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so I would throw that on there. So once I get them all trained, I think we'll be good. Yeah, but that's that- one of the interesting things about the Chromecast is that it doesn't need you. It doesn't stream from itself. It doesn't stream from your phone. Uh, th- there's a couple of different ways to do this as well, right? A Roku box is only going to stream from itself most of the time. It does have the capability to accept, accept something streamed to it, but let's pretend that it doesn't because most people don't use it that way. You go to the Amazon app. You go to the Netflix app. You go to the Hulu Plus app. You choose what to watch. It sends it to the television over an HDMI cord. Simple as that. Apple TV does all of those things the way Roku does, but they have something called AirPlay. So if you have an Apple device, whether it's a laptop Uh, or even a desktop or an iPad or an iPhone, you can AirPlay from the apps to the Apple TV, or you can mirror the screen. That's what I was doing with the NFL uh, Red Zone. I was just mirroring the screen onto my TV through the Apple TV. That's the best way to watch Hulu, in my opinion, is to just put Hulu on a laptop, if you have an Apple laptop, and AirPlay it so you don't have to pay for Hulu Plus. Still got to watch the ads, but at least you're not paying for the privilege of watching the ads. But Chromecast does it differently. Chromecast says, we're going to start on your phone. And it can be an iPhone. It can be an Android phone. Both of those platforms are going to work. It can even and be in your, your app, it can even you have be a, a, button. A, a laptop. You can have a laptop in the other room. You can have a that's, laptop in the room with you. That's you true. Can you, even, can, you can do it on, on your Chrome browser only on your laptop. Uh, and then you press the button that says, I, I want to send this to the Chromecast. But instead of like the AirPlay where it's mirroring, it's saying, we're going to take what's on your your laptop and we're going to put it on the television. It says, we're going to take the source of that and get it on the Chromecast the way a Roku would. So you can continue to use your phone, use your laptop, and it will just continue to stream on the Chromecast, which is why you were waiting for 27 minutes before your daughter came back. Because you were busy doing other stuff. And yeah. You weren't noticing that she was watching it. Yeah. And, and you could, I could even be busy doing other stuff on the same device that I used to start the stream over there. And people in the chat room are reminding me that apparently you can set up a whole playlist in your in your YouTube app and set that up. Oh, yeah. You up, can so. queue things up. That's right. We, right. we do that sometimes, Eileen and I. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. So far, I'm very, very impressed with it. I like it a lot. Uh, it, it is 
very inexpensive. Uh, it, it does it. The, the mirroring from the Chrome browser tabs is a little laggy in my experience. But for $35, the ability <laughs> As, to send Netflix, send YouTube, send Hulu, they've got HBO Go compatibility. If you've got a phone already, this is definitely the way to start. As one person on Twitter told me, you have a very serious decision to make. Would you rather have a Chromecast or a case for your iPhone? <laughs> which one? <laughs> which one is more important to you? Now, well, up, in, up until November, I would have said uh, that that I have a cobbled together system, but I changed to using a game console. Nicole, are you are you using a PS4 a lot? Um, no, I'm using it to game, but I'm not. So really you're not using, using it, it for video. I am using Amazon Prime when when I'm in the living room with my PS4. If if there's something on Amazon Prime that I because I really do like what they've done with that app on the PS4 versus the Roku, um, but yeah, I'm not using the PS4 all that much for streaming services. I've set it all up, but it just is not that convenient for me. I had the same experience with the PS4. I set it all up, but I didn't use it. But you know what I do use the Xbox One, Brian. I think you've been mm -hmm. using it too. You know, I actually don't have an Xbox One. I do use the hell out of my regular Xbox. Uh, at, at your place. Um, it seemed like there were some hiccups you were having with the HDMI pass through. You know, no, what I had was direct TV's box goes to sleep. So when it goes to sleep, the Xbox then says, I lost your signal. And then when you wake the direct TV box up, it takes a long time for the Xbox to notice that it's awake and bring the signal back in. I have since switched to passing through the TiVo into my Xbox One. So what the way it works is you plug the HDMI from the source of your television into the Xbox, and then you plug the another HDMI cable from your Xbox into your television, and then everything goes through the Xbox. And the beauty of that is you have an app called Television on the Xbox. When you click it, television goes full screen. You don't even know you're in the Xbox, but you can still use the voice commands, which I've started to use more, and they work better. Uh, it seems like that maybe they did now, a firmware is, is, update. Is or this something. a case where you're training it or it's training you? A little of both. It's, <laughs> okay. it's, you don't train it, but I think I'm getting used to how its cadence and its rhythm. Yeah. Right. Uh, speaking of which, uh, side note has nothing to do with anything. I saw the best troll video. Somebody set his gamer tag to Xbox One shut down. <laughs> so <laughs> everyone so would you, shout at him and then they'd be like, no, wait, 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 wait. Oh, <laughs> and we're done. Yeah, it, it, that that is funny. But the fact that television is going through there, even though it's just over the air, is incredibly convenient. And, and some people in foreign countries, like I had a, a Peter Wells from Australia was saying, yeah, it's not really that compelling to me because it doesn't integrate with my TV system. Like, it doesn't have to. The, the, the brilliance of it isn't being able to control your television with the Xbox and change channels with the Xbox. I never do that, even though it's cap I'm capable of it. The brilliance is when I want to play a video game, I just press the Xbox button or even say Xbox switch to and it switches to it. Or even better, when I want to go from over the air TV to Netflix to Amazon to Vudu to YouTube, they're all in there. I, I, I've got all of the services. The big problem is it's six hundred, what is it, $500, yeah. right? Uh, and you have to pay a yearly fee for Xbox Live to be able to access all that stuff. Yeah, so if you're I, not I, wanting to pay that already, this is not the box for you. The the Xbox Live thing, and again, it's kind of like your point earlier about if you cut the cord and you already have Netflix, then it's not an additional cost. Like, I've been paying that Xbox Live fee for, for 10 years now, so it's like it doesn't really phase me that that's part of the deal for it. But, yeah, but then that's, again, that's, I'm not actually, I don't have an Xbox One yet. Well, and that's the thing, right? If you're going to pay that anyway, then it's, it's, it's a really good thing to add in is like, well, now I don't have to buy another device. But if you're not going to pay for the Xbox anyway, if you're not going to pay for Xbox Live anyway, there are better, cheaper options. I mean, you can get a Roku, not a Roku 3, but you can get a Roku that's going to cost you like 50 bucks. You can get a Chromecast for 35 bucks. You can get an Apple TV for 70, 80 bucks. So, you know, they, these other options you can cobble together. The problem is not all of them have all of the apps, right? Roku yep. 3 has YouTube now, but mm -hmm. not the other Roku's, and right. uh, Apple TV doesn't have Amazon Video on it. So uh, if, you, if you were going to make one pick, like uh, bang for the buck, somebody who's dipping a toe into the cord cutting revolution, what is the one device you would say pick this up, play with it? If you like it, then dive farther in. For me, I would say Roku, the Roku Three. But then again, it's maybe the Chromecast too, because that's well, only thirty five bucks. I'll, I'll tell you, the, the Roku has done an amazing job of making itself known to people who are outside of the tech sphere. You know, my in laws. The first time I saw a Roku in person was when my in laws got one, and they love it for watching their Netflix and so on. I'd say Roku is the starter kit, right? I, I think mm -hmm. that's the best way to go because it's affordable. 
You get a, a lot of different services in there. You're not going to get Apple. You're not going to get the ability to, to AirPlay. You can stream some stuff to it, though. It depends on the device. But you get Hulu. You get Netflix. You get Amazon. And if you plink down for the Roku 3, you're going to get YouTube as well. And you get a lot of others. I mean, Crackle's on there. There's, there's other apps. There's a, a, hundreds of thousands of apps in there. So there's a lot of stuff to choose from. I'm it's, developing it's some. It's the starter kit. <laughs> What? I said, I'm developing a few Roku apps specifically uh, for court there killers. <laughs> uh, but I, I don't know if it's the ultimate setup, right? It's yeah. the bang for your buck setup, though, definitely. What about you, Brian? Which one would you pick? I mean, if you're tech savvy enough and you have the right stuff, I'm, I'm really impressed with my experience on the Chromecast. $35 is such a ridiculously low. You will spend less than that going on one date to one movie downtown, and you can get that... Uh, and, and open up uh, all almost what 90 percent of all the content on the internet is now available in your living room yeah i don't think you could beat that well and they just announced today that they just released the uh developers kit so it's now open for people developers i mean so, essentially they they say bring on the hacks go nuts yeah. do whatever you want make this and and already it's amazing you know there there are these beta devices that allow you to take either your entire desktop from your laptop or the or just a single tab from chrome and stream it over to your chromecast i think that uh, i think that now that they're opening it up and making it everybody's toy i think you're going to start seeing a lot more novel developments with it. It is yeah, still in beta. It. You still need another device for it. I wouldn't recommend it for total beginners. It's definitely the most bang for your buck if you know how to use it. Sure. But Roku is the thing you can give to people who really aren't into technology and set it up, put it on their on their internet network, and it'll work. And they, they'll and they'll be able to get it immediately. I agree. I agree with that. Uh, uh, do, you know, a lot of people might say smart TVs are like that too, because it's already a television, right? But the smart TV interfaces have just sucked so far. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and unfortunately, the problem with smart TV interfaces is uh, that they're laggy and slow. The way they respond to the complaint about smart TV interfaces is by throw, throwing even more novelty, gimmicky, crap-like, connect-like interfaces so that it gets even more laggy and slow. And and the problem is, is that you know, you're better off having a dedicated box. Uh, we've talked about this before on the show. Uh, I want my display to do one thing, and that is show exquisitely wonderful visuals, and that's it. I want it to, to be a monitor, and that's all. There's also the Roku streaming stick, which is very similar to the Chromecast, plugs into an HDMI port, does a lot of the Roku stuff. You can get Blu-ray players that have streaming apps on them, which if you're going to buy the Blu-ray player anyway, okay, that might be a way to satisfy maybe your Netflix habit. The apps usually aren't updated very frequently. They're not that good, and they don't have a wide selection most of the time. Uh, and some people in the chat room are like, dude, the best way to go is a home theater PC. It's also the most expensive, but yeah. Running something like Plex or XBMC, these these are home theater apps that allow you to manage multiple streaming services and download services all at once. Uh, it's it's going to be the best option. It just takes some setup and mm -hmm. and it. It's more costly to buy a desktop PC than it is to buy a thirty five dollar Chromecast. Well, you mentioned XB. Uh XBMC, uh, our friend Brian Dunaway, I sent him, I had a, an Ouya that I had backed and I wasn't using it. So I said, hey, do you want this Ouya? And he took the it. The game and he console, put, right? He the put, little mini game yeah. console based on Android. Yeah, it's an Android device. So he, he threw uh, XBMC on it and now he has a, a streaming service, a streaming player that he uses with that. You know, I, I put XBMC on my Ouya and I felt it was a little slow, but it does work. Like you get it, like it's there. Yeah, so uh, what none of these devices, and you mentioned this in regards to the Roku versus the Chromecast, you have what uh, what we call the babysitter problem. When you have somebody coming into your house for the first time, how, <laughs> how technical do you want to get to when you explain to them how to watch television in your house? And uh, one of the uh, solutions that we've seen is the Logitech Harmony Remote, which uh, do all three of us have one? Do we all have we Harmonies? I have, two. I have a Harmony <laughs> Ultimate, which uh, I know, Brian, that you have a problem with the Logitech, and I think the Logitech Harmony Ultimate solves that problem. Really? Okay, because my problem is now I bought what, and this was like three years ago, I bought whatever the most expensive was w because I just wanted it to be done, uh, and it works. It works great with everything. It, it y You tell it what your devices are. It walks you through the process, even if you don't know what 
type of receiver you have. It'll figure it out for you. But the problem is, is everything's done by infrared. So in order to get it to work, you hit power on. I want to watch a movie. You have to hold it there for a good six seconds while it first turns on the television, then turns on the receiver, then moves the receiver over to the right input, then changes the television over to whatever, and uh, and then remaps all the buttons. And the problem is if, if it doesn't pass the babysitter test because if somebody hits it and just kind of like looks away, then all of a sudden a bunch of stuff doesn't happen and nothing's mapped correctly. How does, you said this one fixes that? Logitech Harmony Ultimate works with something I didn't think would work very well and works amazingly well. It sends a Bluetooth signal to a device on your Wi-Fi network. Uh, actually, it may not be a Bluetooth signal. It may actually be sending a Wi-Fi signal. So I'm back out of that. It sends a signal to a device called the hub that is on your Wi-Fi network. And then that hub sends out the proper code to whatever device you're controlling. It sits in front of your television. Now, there's a little repeater in case you have things on a different shelf. So you can put a, a kind of a mini hub down there. And I was like, this is never going to work. It's just a, another version of an IR blaster, which is one of those octopus looking things with the little light bulbs at the end. It works so much better than that. It, it absolutely controls everything. And the beauty of it is I don't even have to be in the same room to change a channel. Now, how, how fast Harper. does it do stuff? Like when it when it runs as a sequence, fast as the 880 did, which is the one that you're talking about, where yeah. you had to stand there and point it. Uh, it it works fast enough. I mean, in these days when you have digital receivers and it takes five seconds to change a channel anyway, it certainly isn't noticeable that that there's any lag there. Man. That's awesome. I will have to buy yet another Logitech <laughs> Harmony remote. Well, and it's got a touch screen. You can put, put in favorite channels and all. It does all the other Logitech things like you say watch TV and it'll turn on the television and your TiVo and turn it to the right input and do all of those things. But you don't have to stand there holding it while it does all those things. It just it just does them from the hub. Right on. All right. Well, uh, should we take a moment and thank our patrons? Oh, my God. The patrons, you know, we we launched the show not having any idea how many people cared about cutting the cord. Turns out, Tom, quite a few. You know how many, how many people care enough to actually subscribe at patreon.com slash cord killers? Take a, take a guess. I'll give you a guess. Five. No, higher. Nicole, um, what do you guess? A hundred. Uh, even more. Turns out 1,231 patrons are subscribing, and uh, they get the best experience. We send them both uh, this episode and it's spoiler in time all in the same feed all at once to get it ahead of everyone else. And meanwhile, they're making it possible for us to bring ad-free for the moment cord killers to you guys, uh, which, by the way, we're saving you some bucks. So, uh, you know, just give us a little kickback. That's yeah. how little I justified tip. it. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to go all Hulu on you. I promise. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you to the Patreons. Patreon.com slash cord killers for your support. Now, okay, we've got you the streaming services. We've got you the devices. Maybe you're convinced. Maybe you're thinking, okay, those are the streaming services I'd subscribe to. Those are the, that's the device I'd get. But Tom, how am I going to watch? What am I going to watch on these things? Am I going to be able to see the things I want to see? Yes, we're going to tell you those things under surveillance. Not like real estate. It's all about location, location, location. Under surveillance is the in a normal show is where we just talk about cool stuff that's had movies, TV shows that are coming out. Uh, I, I want to say before we get deeper into this that pretty much everything that you could watch with a cable subscription, you can watch legally without a cable subscription. You just have to be willing to pay for it. Yeah, almost and everything comes out the next day for purchase either from Vudu or from Amazon or from iTunes or something, right? I will say that the only exception to this, and it's a conspicuous exception, is HBO. And HBO has publicly said that they enjoy the notoriety of being the most pirated whatever. And it seems like, for whatever perverse reason, they almost are creating a black market for themselves. And that's fine. That's their decision to be able to do. Uh, but for the rest of us who just want to enjoy all the rest of the amazing programming out there, you can do it as long as you can handle waiting for the following morning to get just about everything you want legally. Those are the things you give up. You give up uh, maybe watching it live with everyone else and talking on Twitter. Uh, you give up local sports that are on cable uh, because they're blacked out from the services you'd pay for. And HBO, Showtime sometimes has them available for purchase, sometimes not. Pretty much everything else is going to be available legally somehow. But how do you find it? That's the thing. Because it's it's different with every different service. The stuff that's on iTunes is not the same as the stuff that's available for purchase on Vudu, which is not the same as the stuff that's streaming on Netflix. And then stuff goes away on Netflix. And 
How do well, you keep track of and it? And you just you just hit the worst part of it, Tom, which is like something will be available on one of those, but it'll be a windowed release, and all of a sudden yeah. it goes away. At some point, I wanted to show my kids uh, the fantastic Mr. Fox, and it killed me. It was like, well, I just saw it here the other day, and now it's not here. And then I go to Twitter. I'm like, can anybody tell me any legal way I could show my kid the fantastic Mr. Fox? And the answer was no. You can, but but here's an illegal way. And I was like, oh, curse you! No, don't underneath. do that. Uh, so where are you gonna where are you gonna go to find? The stuff that you want to watch. And and you mentioned this earlier, uh, Nicole, but tell us a little more about Yidio. Uh, so Yidio is a it's an app that you can put on your phone um, or you could go to the website. So it's both um, if you don't have. I'm not sure if it's an Android. I would think it would be, but I know it's in definitely in an iOS. I think it's both, um, yeah. But but the idea is that you. You can use your Facebook login. So all those wonderful likes of movies and TV shows, it integrates those into the app and it builds your playlist. Um, and you can even set up to be notified uh, when a new episode has has come out. Um, it has a lot of great. I've also discovered a lot of new shows and movies through the app, too, because the, the organization of all the content I, I find really a, um, easy to use, and it's just a nice little app. But there's a lot of them. The market's being flooded with these types of services. So because there's definitely a need for it. I use Can I Stream yeah. IT at Can I Stream IT. Also a Nicole recommendation. <laughs> uh, and you you put you, there's an app, but there's also a website. You put in the name of what you're looking for, and then you you have to pick movie or TV. That's the one weird thing. Uh, but once you once you say search movies or search TV, it'll look and say okay. Here are all of the, the episodes of that TV show or here are the movies. Click here and we'll tell you which services or get them. You can set alerts for things like Netflix to say, hey, if it does come to Netflix, send me an email. Let me know. Well, what's cool about these apps, too, is they are integrating the other apps. So like we were talking at the top of the show, the network. So with the CW and Fox, so you, what it does is it, it will go through and say, oh, you have you don't have these installed. Video Do you want to install that on the them? App. I noticed that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So it just it seamlessly takes you. And if there's multiple options for a movie or TV show, you can pick whichever one you want, and it will open that app and take you right to that movie or TV show. So there's some really cool stuff out there. Like Yideo, um, there's another service called Fan, which I believe is just an app. Um, you have moreflix.com. That's just a website. So and slide reel was new to me. I, I haven't. Oh, side, I've never, side reel. Uh, I've side. been using side reel forever <laughs> yeah. to just track when I, you know what shows I've watched because there's certain shows that I've ca caught up with slowly over the years. And, I, and then I forget, like, what was the last episode I watched? And Side Reel is great for that. They'll also alert you when new seasons come up as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I feel bad that I haven't used any of these uh, websites or, or apps or anything. And I suspect the reason is, is because I rely so heavily on personal recommendations over Twitter, uh, which I suppose is just as legitimate a way as for anything else. If you have any kind of social network that you're plugged into, you're paying attention to, uh, I guess that's the easiest way to be a cord, cord kill killer is if everyone else is cutting the cord with you. Well, yeah, that's that's Brian, one of the best ways for recommendations and discovery for sure. We should be friends on Facebook because then you can see all my video suggestions, all my likes, and then I can see yours. That's <laughs> so true. you can actually you can you can browse your friends' shows that they're they're liking and following. The thing I want these these for the the one that I just I remembered on my own, and I'm just like, oh, I want to watch Ten Speed and Brown Shoe. Where where is it streaming? I haven't had nobody told me. I just decided like, you know, one day, oh, I, I want to watch that. How do I find it? See, that's okay. And by the way, this is not the first time you mentioned 10 speed and brown shoe. And I was trying to think of what my version of that would be. And it would be Knight Rider. Like I might get a wild hair and be like, I need to see some Michael Knight right now. Where can I go to get it? So that's what I need these for. Yeah. Now there's also, okay. So let, let's skip over the fact that pretty much every broadcast and, and major cable television network has their shows available. So that's how you find those. But there's also shows you can only find on the internet. And this is new in the past couple of years. The most famous, of course, being House of Cards. But Amazon has their own original shows. Alpha House with John Goodman is a satire on politics. Betas is a satire on Silicon Valley culture. Uh, as we mentioned, Netflix has House of Cards with Kevin Spacey, a political thriller. But there's also the tragic comedy Orange is the New Black based on the book. There's also Lilyhammer. The new season of Arrested Development came to Netflix. Hulu has originals. They picked up Misfits out of the UK and did more seasons. The Awesomes is a great cartoon. Quick Draw is funny. The, I thought the booth at the end was was amazing. 
Do you guys have any favorites of these originals that you can only see by getting? These are ones that if you have cable, you're left out. I mean, I, I don't know that I could probably put into words how much I loved House of Cards and how excited I am for season two of House of Cards. Uh, Orange is the, new, is the New Black was fantastic as well. Uh, let's not forget YouTube originals as well or stuff that's being distributed to YouTube. There's an amazing ecosystem of not just people talking about the, you know, the, the, the dump their cat took or whatever. It's like you get you get some amazing stuff. Bravest Warriors is incredible. And Fraser Kane hounded us for, for literally years before finally we gave it its proper due. And I'm I'm in love with it. There's amazing content and it's astonishing uh how quickly you will stop wanting the 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 kind of nonstop all you can eat buffet that, that cable usually provides. What are your yeah. favorite originals, Nicole? Uh Orange and Orange is the New Black really blew me away. Like that show, yeah, it's amazing. It's I will, as long as they keep producing it, I will always be a Netflix subscriber because <laughs> that that was really the one that stood out for me. I, I enjoyed Arrested Development as well. I thought that was really kind of cool. I'm surprised I haven't seen more TV shows kind of um, revitalized because of, I mean, was that a success for Netflix? I thought it was. Oh, it certainly is. Uh, and, I mean, it certainly was as far as publicity goes. And they made it clear that that was part of what they were buying was the notoriety of bringing back Arrested Development from the from the dead. They were curiously quiet about the actual numbers that it did. It's, it's assumed from people on the outside like us that it didn't perform quite up to expectations. Uh, however, uh, the, the mere fact that they're able to... The success of Arrested Development, as far as their, the goodwill, almost certainly has contributed to some of the bold plans, for example, for individual Marvel series, all meant to tie in to the upcoming Marvel movie. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it, they're, they're only going to double, triple, and quadruple down on these originals because, as they've mentioned, they're following straight out of HBO's playbook. You know, when you forgot uh, Hemlock Grove, the, the, uh, the sci-fi eh, TV show. I don't show. know that I forgot it. I just, I, I didn't say it. You didn't more like horror. it? Isn't is it more it horror a... than sci-fi, I would think? Uh, yeah, it is horror, yeah. Isn't it also kind of teeny? It, it, no, I don't mean small. I mean, like, meant for teeny. <laughs> from, from what I understand, if you're a fan of the horror genre, it delivers that in spades and will definitely <laughs> treat you right if that's what you're into. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> I got about two-thirds of the way through the season bad. and I couldn't finish it. <laughs> I'm just not the target demo. I How have yet that? to finish it. Let's put it that way. Um, maybe I will. That's the beauty of these things too, right? Once they're made by an Amazon or a Netflix, they're going to stay on Amazon and Netflix for the rest of their life. So you can go watch them whenever you want. This is not something that is going to go away. Yeah, but, but and keep uh, and in mind, you can watch it at your own pace. It's not even a case that they're going to be limited to just Netflix and Amazon. You know, we've sure. seen stuff that was a Netflix original that's already made it out. To, you know, you could buy the Blu-rays to to watch House of Cards. You and I'm sure somebody somewhere is licensing it to to show it on some kind of network. At some sure, point. if you want to go back in time and buy optical discs, you can do that. <laughs> yes, well, and exactly. I will I will say the the whole not knowing when a show or movie is going to expire is really quite annoying. And I, spe especially for new people. So like my mother-in-law, she was like, so I have these shows that I want to watch. How do I know? Is it going to let me know when it's going to, when it's going to go away? I'm like, no, she's like, no. so I don't want to so start a show. Them. And watch them quick. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't end up being a problem most of the time. Now, the shows stay around for long enough windows for years in many cases that, that you don't run into it too often. But it can happen where you're like halfway through a season and then somebody loses the rights and you got to go track it down and figure out, oh, did Amazon get it? Is it on Hulu now? Where did it end up going to? Uh, I think those kinds of things may happen less often or at least they'll be easier to track down in the future. But the, the thing about these originals, if you aren't, it, it, there's lots of different approaches to watching television that need to be served, right? There's my wife wants to be watching the hottest, latest, newest thing, and she wants to watch it with the rest of the world and, and, and talk about it. Uh, that makes it much harder to cut the cord. If you're like, I just want to watch good stuff, then cut the cord right away because there's good stuff. Yeah, and uh, if there's one thing that you have to give up when you cut the cord, it's, and forgive the, the the crass imagery, but what I always think of is diarrhea television, just this nonstop fit of like, here's some more beige shoved in your face that's that people genuine, generally tend to like. Uh, and once you give that up and all of a sudden all of your viewing becomes on purpose, 
it's amazing. It's it's a fantastic experience. You find yourself, on the one hand, more highly critical of what you're bothering to invest time to watch, but on the other hand, you get a much deeper appreciation. We're we're entering uh, what people are calling the third golden age of television, where people are treating them like movies. You're able to get. Uh, an increased fidelity of experience, a better quality of storytellers out here. And the best way to experience it is to do all your watching on purpose by cutting the cord. Yeah, because you have the widest range of quality as well. You know, somebody out there is laughing right now, golden age of television, and then throwing out their favorite reality show to make fun of as an example of why it's not the golden age. Yeah. That's not an example of why it's not the golden age. That's an example of how there is pretty much something for everyone out there. Yeah. Well, no matter what you it, think. It, yeah, and, and, and you've mentioned, Tom, you've confessed your addiction to Iron Chef and... and no, and, Top Chef. See, oh, you can't even chef. get the right reality. See, whatever, <laughs> it's all the same. It's all I food. I love Top Chef. That's great. That's like, that's like one of the only reality shows that I will even... Be, that and The Taste. Those are the two. And Don't, don't Trust Andrew Mays. And Don't Trust Andrew Maine is a fantastic reality show yes. on the A&E Network. You should watch it tonight. <laughs> uh, so I, like, that brings us to the decision, right? Okay, let's say you're the person who's like, I'm hearing all these things. I get the services, and I know I'm going to sign up for Netflix, and I'm going to shop at Vudu. You know, I totally forgot with Vudu. It's part of this ultraviolet system, which means if you sign up for another ultraviolet-enabled property, and get free movies from them, they'll also show up in your Vudu account. I've done this. I've signed up for the Target uh, system, which gives you like 10 free movies. And I signed up for Flickster, which gave me a couple free movies. And I signed up for Vudu when they went ultraviolet and got 10. I've got like 30 That's free cool. movies in my Vudu account now. Anyway, side note, how do you decide that it's time to cut the cord, that it's worth it for you? <laughs> I'm sorry, what just happened, I thought, Brian, I, I thought you were, were going to tell us how you decide that it's time to cut the cord. I'll tell you what I do is I head on over to sidereel.com slash topic slash cord cutting and take a look at all the different ways to get everything that you want, all the devices, all the hardware, all the free sites and apps, all the paid services, all the cable add-ons, and of course the Olympics, and make the decision if, well, if I can see everything that I want to see, then it seems to me like it's really just a matter of dollars That's how cents. you did it? I was asking you how you did it because you cut the cord. How did you make oh, that decision? Well, how I did it was I got really annoyed at my bill one day and I tried to just cancel HBO and I was so annoyed at their customer retention that I went into a Hulk like rage and just canceled everything. So that's you don't don't be like me. <laughs> so be, you were just rash. Yeah. How did you rationalize that rash decision afterwards? Then? Well, it turns out I hosted a show at the time about cutting the cord and I thought it would be a good experiment to actually try doing no, it. No, no, but you, you okay, that, that that's that's funny and all, Brian. But I remember you telling me like you looked at the math and realized I've got this pile of money now that I can that I can save, that I can invest, that I can pay for stuff that I wouldn't have paid for. Yeah, before. for most for most of us you're looking at saving a thousand dollars a year. Let me say that again slower. For most of us, you're looking at saving a thousand dollars a year. Imagine how many devices you could buy a Chromecast, a Roku, an Apple TV, and go out and buy seasons of all your favorite things and still have enough money left over to go, you know, I don't know, throw a hundred dollars in the air and roll around in it. I mean, the point <laughs> is, like, it is ridiculous how much money that we're spending on on cable right now. And the ability to get out of that ecosystem frees up a lot of ways for you to pay for your content directly. And to be honest, most times, more often than not, that's a better deal for the content creators because that means more of the money's going straight to them, I would imagine. I'm making that up. But uh, I, I don't know. You're, you're sort of nodding, sort of sneering, Tom. Well, I can't see you, so I don't know how you're reacting. But I, I'm, I actually am just uh, – I'm thinking about my decision that has to come soon. So, so give me a minute. Nicole, how did you decide? So we were saving our, – our DirecTV bill was, I think, 130 a month. So we're saving a, a ton of money because we were already paying for Netflix. I was already paying for Netflix Prime. We just put all the pieces together um, and realized – the, the thing that unlocked it for us was realizing with the antenna – and our, we already had TiVos that we weren't using. We had TiVo premieres um, because at one time we had cable and we had a cable card with them. Um, and we weren't using them because we had DirecTV. So they were just sitting there. So we decided to kind of put them to work. Uh, put them to work. <laughs> and honestly, we cut the cord before our DirecTV was over just to see if we would even notice it. 
You know, and that's actually a really good point because Tom had suggested this. Go ahead and play pretend for a week about what it mm-hmm. would be like to cut the cord. Go ahead and physically unscrew the cord from the back of your cable box and just see, like, every time you want to go see a certain thing, see how you would do it if you were thrust into it. And it's easier than you think. Yeah, I, I've been doing this with with Eileen, my wife, because she doesn't want to lose that ability to watch people, watch the show with other people watching it at the same time. Uh, she does. She She's a little leery that... She wants to sometimes just turn on the TV like on HGTV and just have a bunch of shows play, not have to think about it. Uh, So I I put the TiVo on the Xbox so that that's, you know, over the air is giving us a little bit of that experience. Uh, You know, I've been I've been keeping track of what we're actually watching on the direct TV and what what we couldn't what we could watch otherwise. And in fact, the other day I, I pointed out like we don't have a direct TV box in any of the other rooms. We only have it in the living room because we've shaved it down to as little as we possibly can. And she's like, well, I, I really would like to watch House Hunters in the bedroom. I'm like, guess who has House Hunters? Amazon Instant Prime Streaming. Now you're watching it in the bedroom for no extra cost. What do you think of that? And how's uh, that so going? She's still not convinced. She still gets a pained <laughs> expression. She has, she has once agreed, like when I laid out the math, I said, look, even if we did Time Warner's $30 a month HBO with local channels so we can not lose Game of Thrones, and and that's and that was all the cable we had. We would save five hundred dollars a year. And if we didn't do that, we'd save a, you know whatever thirty times uh, three almost a thousand dollars a year if we didn't do that. So so tell me, is this is this worth it to be able to occasionally watch a season finale or a season premiere and be on Twitter and make snarky comments? And is keep it worth a thousand dollars a year? Keep in mind that that if it's that big of a deal, like yes, there is only one time that there will be the very last episode of Breaking Bad. But guess what? That is such a rare and precious and special event. You can go to a friend's house and have a party and be part yeah, of she all this stuff. She, she, I asked, actually tried that on her. She's like, no, <laughs> then, then people will be making noise. It'll be loud. I won't be able to hear. I want to concentrate. All right. Have either of you uh, installed Plex yet? Because they have apps within Plex. And I know I just installed an HGTV app. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. No, I haven't. A, yeah, that's cool. That's yeah. uh, they don't have all of their stuff on HGTV because they get some from Canada. That's mm-hmm. what that's one weird niche issue. Uh, and so you'd have to VPN to Canada and watch whatever their version of Home and Garden to get some of those shows. This is a weird licensing issue. But th- those kinds of issues are going to get rarer and rarer as time goes on. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope this hap- helped folks out. Uh, before we finish up, we've got some dispatches from the front. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Who do we? Who? Which one you want to jump in with first here, Tom? Oh, I. You know, I just wanted to make a quick mention of Twitter's Rye Alcott. He recommends uh, a Netflix document called Cropsy. Uh, if you're looking for something to watch, and, and maybe you're a new Netflix subscriber now, or maybe you're an old ne- Netflix subscriber, it's a American documentary film written and directed by Joshua Zaman and Barbara Brancaccio uh, that goes into. Uh, an examination of boogeyman-like figures from New York's urban legend, and then segues into a story of a convicted child kidnapper from Staten Island. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. It's a good uh, time. <laughs> Jeff wrote us in saying that he has a live streaming story that doesn't involve the Super Bowl. He said, the only thing my seven-year-old son cared about Sunday was what the groundhog would say. So my son and I wake up at 645 Sunday morning to see coverage of the groundhog after flipping through news stations. It became apparent that all they're focusing on is the Super Bowl. And so pretty soon they're they're gonna they're just gonna cut real quick over at 720 to the groundhog so he checked online found a live stream for the official coverage streamed it to their apple tv they were able to watch everything real time leading up to the actual reveal which i thought this was interesting this is a case where by being somebody who wanted something that wasn't what the masses wanted he was able to find a direct feed to it and and it made me think of like one thing we didn't address is all the amazing live content your local news station is very likely live on Ustream mm-hmm. or justin.tv or livestream.com and you know gameplay commentaries on twitch.tv there's uh there's a whole other ecosystem out there that we didn't even get a chance to address and watching groundhog's day on crackle 
<laughs> That's right. There you go. Uh, we also have something we've called the chicken challenge, where we tell people, call your cable company, say you're going to cancel, see what kind of deal they give you, and report back what you do. Do you end up keeping it? Do you take the deal? Or do you go ahead and cut anyway, like Brian did? Uh, we got one from Joshua here. He says, I wanted to report my chicken challenge results. Happened a few years ago when I was still using Comcast. After spending two hours on the phone and being transferred to level three support executive, they offered to let me keep my cable subscription the same and lower my bill to $35 less than it would be if I had simply canceled my cable and went internet only. I wow. told them I wasn't really interested. I just wanted them to cancel my cable service. That's when things got nasty. They said they would charge a $30 service fee for deactivating my cable account, as well as a $20 equipment return fee, even if I went to their offices and turned the equipment in myself. After some argument, the rep offered me the $35 discount and six months of free HBO and Showtime, which I didn't have. I still canceled the account, and when they tried to charge me their fees, I disputed the charges with my bank. After another chat with their reps, they removed the charges from my account. Thankfully, I don't live anywhere near a Comcast service area anymore. But the real question is, how many levels of, of support hell are there? I only made it to level three. Surely there must be more. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, man, you ever want to see somebody turn on you, listen to the way customer retention kicks in when they actually try to do that. We got one more from Anthony. It says, love the show, was interested in hearing somebody saving money by the, oh, he loves the show, was interested last week when we talked about somebody saving money by buying the DVDs of an early season of Persons of Interest. Well, I'd like to tell you that I save even more by using the public library. My local oh, library yeah. is connected to all other libraries across the state, uh, South Australia. Uh, I could go online, search for any season of any TV show on Blu-ray or DVD. All the libraries uh, then request for that title to be available at my local library for pickup. Usually takes only a few, few days, and I receive an email text to let me know that it's available. I normally pick up several DVDs and Blu-rays per week to watch. Best part, if I haven't finished the titles, I just renew them for another two weeks. Zero cost to me. Wow, that's kind of old. That's sneaker net. Sneaker yeah, net right? cable cut, cord it cut. works Love just that. as well. <laughs> yeah. Nicely done, Anthony. Good, good stuff. Uh, well, thank you all for watching. I hope this was helpful. We just kind of wanted to take stock now that there are really, honestly, seriously good ways to watch quality television programming and movies on the Internet legally. We wanted to take a, a survey. I definitely picked up a few hints here. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, a uh, couple of things to plug. Of course, we're live every 5.30 Central Time. Uh, you go ahead and follow at Cord Killers or go to CordKillers.com. But most importantly, you should be keeping up with Nicole Spagnolo and the Ladies of Elite. Yeah, uh, you can find me at LadiesElite.com. Uh, me and two other ladies talk about video games. And I also just started a new podcast, if, if you don't mind, if I tell the listeners. No, please do. Um, it's called Nerd Parents, and so I have a two-year-old son, and we talk about parenting in a world of technology and all the nerdy wonderness. This is uh, this there. is your co-host, you and your two-year-old son, right? <laughs> well, no, it's actually me and a panel of parents. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, we have conversations. No. <laughs> and where can people find Nerd Parents? You can go to nerdparents.com. Right on. Nerd well, thanks yeah. so much for joining us, Nicole. Thanks, thanks for having Nicole. me on the show. And thanks, everybody, for watching CordKillers.com. If you would like to subscribe, there are links there to do so, or just search your local app or podcast library. We'll see you next time.